My name is Nomitemba Tamba. I'm currently the South African High Commissioner for the United Kingdom. Aunt Lindywa was also a High Commissioner in London. In fact, she was so tremendously good that former President Thabo Mbeki kept her in the United Kingdom for eight years, where the impact she had on the British, on the government, and on the South African and African diaspora was absolutely immense. She was herself, as we all know, the most amazing poet. She loved the arts. She was a deeply, deeply um, intuitive and intelligent politician, diplomat, with a, a, a really unique world view, because at the back of everything that she did, there was always this tremendous compassion and generosity and joie de vivre. And people loved her. They were drawn to her warmth, as I was, as I used to laugh with her, as she used to laugh with my mother, the many, many friendships that she created, strong, lasting friendships, wherever she went and wherever she served the South African government from the days before we became a democracy and indeed, of course, the days after. One of the things I think that we'll all remember about Aunt Lindywa was the tremendous smile that she had. She was joyful in her soul and it radiated from her. She was beautiful, she was elegant and she was loyal. She never forgot to take care of those who she believed to be considered as part of her family. Whether they were or not, she embraced everyone and would do anything to help someone or to introduce them to people or situations that she thought would work in their favour. I don't know if we'll ever have the privilege of experiencing another High Commissioner in the United Kingdom, like Aunt Lindy were. To this day, she is still loved. In fact, she was here in 2019 uh, for the launch of one of her books. I've been blessed that every posting I've ever had, she has come and spent glorious days with me, and we've had tremendous fun. I will carry those memories deep in my heart, forever alive in my mind. We love her, we revere and honour her, and I think that her legacy will live for generations. Well, I, I, I thought I might have met her in the 70s in Lusaka, uh, because I had a meeting with Oliver Tambo and uh, Tabo Mbeki at that time. And of course, she was working there at the at Lusaka. But I don't think I met her then until she became um, High Commissioner in London. And she was undoubtedly um, a great success there. She, uh, she was so gracious. Um, and she knew about my activity as, as a former president of the anti-apartheid movement. So we clicked immediately. And I was a regular visitor during her time as High Commissioner to South Africa House. And she came up with um, to Edinburgh with, with President Mbeki um, in 2001, when um, he was on his state visit to, to the UK. And I was presiding officer of the Scottish Parliament, and he came and addressed the Scottish Parliament. And she was in the entourage there. Um, and then the last time I, I recall meeting her was in um, 2007 at the centenary uh, meeting in, um, I think it was Johannesburg or Pretoria, which the then British High Commissioner organised. Um, and I came to speak for the 100th anniversary of um, Oliver Tambo's birth. And so she, she was a fantastic figure. I mean, one of the first elected members of the Scottish, of the South African Parliament, and with a great background from her academic period in, in the United States, she really was a, a, an all-round figure and a great figure in South African life. 
I'm here to remember my good friend, Ambassador Lindiwe Mabuza. My wife and I first met her soon after her arrival in London as the High Commissioner. We met her at South Africa House. It was a very pleasant meeting. We seemed to like each other on sight. So much so that I invited her to lunch at our home just outside London. She accepted the invitation and was glad to meet our son who we'd taken out of primary school for the day. We briefed young William as to how to greet an ambassador and he was wearing his blazer, shiny brass buttons and he'd practiced his handshake. We told him he needed a firm grip and to look Lindy Wei clear in the eye. She arrived. William was standing to attention in the hall waiting to be introduced. He had his handshake at the ready. She saw him, smiled one of her broader smiles, and instead of extending her hand to his, already extended, she threw her arms around him and gave him such a warm hug. I use this story to illustrate very much the generosity of spirit, the loving, caring disposition that Lin Wei showed not only to us, but I believe everyone she met. That first memorable visit was just one of many occasions when we would meet in London, at her home, again many times in our home, and of course, as the years went by, in her home in South Africa. We grew very close. She was interested in my career, um, became a good friend of my wife Rhonda, and was instrumental in encouraging William in his studies and saw him and the remarkable progress he made, not just through school, but through university. Lindy Wei was a very special lady. So much so, I asked her if she would pay me the honour of sitting for her portrait. Oh, she happily agreed. She said it would give us a chance to sort of chat and get to know each other even better. And I like to think my portrait, when finished, was one of the pictures um, that would go in that category of being a good portrait. I'm glad it was painted. Lin Di Wei was a very special lady. She holds a special place in our hearts. It was a huge privilege for not just me, but for my family to know her. And I know we are all better people for having had that experience of her friendship.
one first. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, now I'm anybody. <laughs> <laughs>
your humour, your wit, your elegance, your grace, your smile, your voice. We will of course miss you, but we're grateful we knew you. We're grateful that you became our dear, dear friend. Go well, Lindiwe. Go well. Hi, I'm Peter Hayne. When I think of Lindiwe, I think of warmth, of joy, of laughter, of generosity, of an incredible hug in one of her wonderful traditional dresses and a sense of warmth that just radiated from her, but also a very strong-willed person who had principles, who stuck to those principles in the freedom struggle, who represented her country as an ambassador in London with enormous flair and enormous success, attracting friends for South Africa as well as incredible allegiance to herself. And she continued to exhibit those principles once she'd retired. And so seeing South Africa under former presidents depart from the principles of the freedom struggle was deeply, deeply wounding for her. And she was steadfast and a stalwart in the very best sense of the term. I think of her with very, with great fondness and great thanks as well for the support she gave to me, organising my mother's 80th birthday in South Africa House, raising the funds from a, do a donor to help make it possible. All sorts of small things and big things is what made Lindiwi so special for so many people. And it's a privilege to honour her memory. Lindiwi's support for the arts, for music and poetry, suffused both her time in the struggle and her official diplomacy. Whatever the occasion she hosted or organised, there was music too. Our friendship grew when she found the Zulu poems of Mazi Sikuneni on our bookshelf and learned that I knew the great poet laureate personally. Her own poetry, Delicate Sparks, was set to music in 2008 and sung deep in the Suffolk countryside in a gorgeous church by the glorious tenor, late Sipiwo Mchebe. She organised Burns Nights. She found scholarships for South African music students and hosted the last ever concert by the Manhattan Brothers at a dinner for Fort Hare University. She created a praise poem for him when President Mandela himself was on stage at South Africa House. She was diplomat extraordinaire and we'll never forget her. My name is Adam Glasser. I'm a South African musician living in London for a long time. It is with great sadness that I learned of former ambassador Lindy Wemabuza's recent passing. She was a tireless supporter of South African musicians during her time as High Commissioner in the United Kingdom. She organized performances on many different occasions, both at her official residence and at the mission in Trafalgar Square. A respected academic and gifted poet, she developed an artistic collaboration with my father, the South African composer Stanley Glasser, resulting in two of her poems, Africa to Me, and these trains being performed to music at the Poetry in Daba they jointly organized at the mission. Other memorable occasions included a tribute to Miriam Makeba and a tribute to anti-apartheid campaigner Mike Terry.
Lindy Wemabuza was especially supportive of the Manhattan Brothers. She invited us to perform at her official residence on several occasions. <laughs> to entertain distinguished visiting members of the South African government. At the end of 2006, Lindy Ware organized the tickets with South African Airways for the Manhattan Brothers to return to promote our album Inyambezi, we had recorded earlier that year. When the time came for her departure after some years in London, a farewell concert was held at the Mission, which featured South African artists performing in her honor, including Anthony Scher and Janet Sussman. She made a huge contribution in London, and she will be remembered with great fondness and gratitude. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, can I ask you to help me welcome on stage Sir Anthony Shear? Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it is my privilege to say a few words of introduction on behalf of the other South African performers who are gathered here tonight to say thank you to Your Excellency for your tremendous support of the arts during your time as High Commissioner. Recently, she received the Best African Diplomat Award from the Diplomat magazine. But it is not only as a diplomat that she has excelled, because she is, of course, also a highly regard, regarded writer and poet. And it is because of this that she has supported those of us in the arts with such passion. Uh, speaking for myself, on the three occasions when I've been involved in shows that um, have had South African connections, uh, she has come to see each of those shows on several occasions and hosted each of the companies of actors and musicians, stage management, to a meal either at her residence or here in South Africa House. And I can tell you that those companies have been so encouraged by the sheer warmth of her enthusiasm for their work. The most recent occasion was a co-production between the Royal Shakespeare Company in Stratford-on-Avon and the Baxter Theatre in Cape Town of Shakespeare's The Tempest. And so I'd like to start this evening's entertainment by performing one of Prospero's speeches, the one in which he bids farewell to his art, uh, appropriate, I hope, as um, Your Excellency bids, prepares to bid farewell to the art that you have practiced so superbly here in South Africa has the art of diplomacy, which possibly has a bit of the magic that Prospero has as well. Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye that on the sands with Printless foot to chase the ebbing Neptune and do fly him when he comes back. You demi puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make whereof the you not bites. And you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew. 
by whose aid weak masters though ye be. I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azured vault set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong-based promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves, at my command, have waked their sleepers, oped and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I hear abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Thank you. And now we come to the subject, uh, Lindy Ware herself. I've taken two of her poems from her wonderful collection of poetry, footprints, fingerprints. And I tussled for a long time about what we should hear tonight. And then it suddenly became terribly obvious. This is the poem. It's called Africa to Me. I prefer no other continent but Africa. Each has its peaks and rolling legends chiseled by their own blacksmiths colored in dyes of their own oceans raw and calm. But I prefer no other continent but Africa. A vast question mark for zealots of color, dappled with Kilimanjaro snows that have melted secrets deep into its locked gorges. Gorgeous with Mediterranean capes, capped with enormous mother's breasts for all creation's creatures. I prefer nowhere else to stir but Africa. Hot cradle home of desire, constrained by periods, stained with sweat and particular blood. Africa. Serene love and bounty, honey, that draws with the splendor of silence. Not birds that orchestrate with wind, wings and words, but lowing herds of slithering stampedes that brazed and bonded her vastness within the scorching exchange, within the bracketing embraces of stone love at noon. But again, I nurse no preferences, but those heart-shaped platforms where bronzes and browns and all brawny shoulders brain. Africa to the future, as lustrous as her undiscovered wealth and where all brains steer her with steel hands to those waves in the horizon begging yes to unconceived pregnancies that are also open-mouthed flowers. I prefer no one continent but Africa.
I will never forget our first girls' night at your warm, cozy home. Fantastic food, a magical evening that saw us bonding together with my daughter and your cousin to the extent that we're comfortable enough, easily comfortable, to hear each other's rendition of old classical African songs. <laughs> like, can those who know join me now? Usari mare so far fan me at evo ma viete sin se hat an di bay fan di gor me lo dar von me sari mare wo bren me tak na di tro transvaal dar var me sari wo da oner and on, there's six or seven of us. <laughs> she wants to do young period. No, no. <laughs> to go all the way, but they forced us that direction. I have no doubt that the success of my work at the High Commission over the years has been in large part to what we have been doing in expressing and exploring our South African culture, our very Africanness. I learned during the long years of the struggle against apartheid that culture was an effective weapon against apartheid, and we used it, I think, effectively. In the grimmest of times, music in particular manifested itself as the optimism, the hope, and the spirit of our people. Music said we were unbeatable. And later, it was the way we expressed the joy of our, our hard-won freedom, which we experienced as an explosion of cultural expression in our country, the unleashing of a free enterprising spirit, which now can only grow from strength to strength. Dear friends, I thank each and every one of you for taking the time in London on such a lovely day, it's not raining, it's not gray, <laughs> to come and be with us, to witness and share this special occasion. I thank you.
grab a hold of you. Steady there, steady there. You will survive, so it seems. Your strength in your grace. Your warmth. Feeling scared of a life alone, not a life that shared. Steady there, steady there, steady there, baby. We'll be missing, we'll be missing.